Here is your head basketball coach. After a big win last night, 66 to 53, 16 and 0, 1 and 0 in the conference. San Diego State's basketball coach Steve Fisher returns to the Scott BR show. Good morning, coach. Oh, Scott BR, happy new year to you guys. Happy new year, coach. Happy Congratulations. Year. Great game last night. Thank you very much. It feels good to win the first one and win it on the road. Yeah, um coach, it's it's interesting because I was watching the game last night with a a group of fans and um you know, in the first half, things just were not really going San Diego State's way. The shooting percentage was down. Um, you, you go into half, and you've only got a three-point lead. And typical San Diego State basketball this year, come out and kind of beat them down in the second half. What exactly happened in the first half? 2,030 seconds for Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. That uh, sat on the bench for an extended period of time. Could not make an open jump shot. Uh TCU was running us off the floor, and fortunately for us, uh, they couldn't make a jump shot either, but they <laughs> were the aggressor, and we were on our heels. We were down six with about four minutes to go, and thanks to our bench, uh, led by Brian Carwell, but also Ray Hahn came in and hit two threes. Uh, Jamal Franklin came in off the bench and played well for us. Uh, we were able to turn a six-point deficit into a three-point halftime lead, and and I think that really was helpful to us. Then we came out and just played terrific defense to start the second half and had five or six steals that turned into breakaway dunks for us, all created by how hard and how effectively we guarded. And, Coach, do you feel like this group has, uh, has a pretty good grip now about what it is to play on the road in the Mountain West? Uh, BR... We've got five guys that started most of last year. So they're, they're accustomed to, uh, life on the road at this level in this league. And it's hard. It's always hard. Last night, there were very few people there. And I, I know TCU is disappointed that they can't get more people to get out and see what is a good basketball team. It's the best team that Jim Christian's had in his three years here. And, uh, they were a very generous 4,200 they elicited for attendance. Right. Uh, and it, uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard for them. Uh, but I thought we competed hard. This is a good league, and, you know, you have to make sure you get your runs and maximize your runs. And we did that again last night. Yeah, we're talking to Steve Fisher, the head basketball coach at San Diego State, SDSU, 66-53 over TCU. You know, I think, Coach, that, it, look, when, when the kids play at home, and you've got a game against Occidental on New Year's Eve day, and the place is still listed as a sellout, um, it's exciting because I think as a player you start to feel the buzz building. But there's always that letdown when you play like you guys did in Vegas a few weeks ago and there was barely anybody there. And, and then you know you go to TCU and it's, there is not the buzz and excitement. But when you still play well and you win, that's what gets teams, I think battle-tested and mentally prepared to play in the really big games that are still to come. What do you think? Uh, Scott, we generated some energy for ourselves. Uh, kids are kids, doesn't matter what level they're at. When you score the ball, you that, that gets a little more bounce in your step. Uh, and uh, we couldn't score the ball early, and I think that affected us just a little bit. But we really generated some energy as a result of how we played defensively and Carwell made that, made that comment it's just a feeling you had when you get a couple of baskets in a row and we went on a 20 to 5 run to start the second half and ended the first half on a 10 to 1 run so we had a great stretch for about 6 or 7 minutes it took a 6 point deficit into an 18-point lead, and uh, and that was the game. Yeah. One of the biggest plays to me was uh, when Malcolm Thomas had a block shot that was so violent. Um, the TCU player went up to try and lay a ball in. Malcolm comes from He's behind, flying. smashes yeah. the ball like a volleyball player. It goes Good flying off the backboard, yeah. and then it turns into a dunk down at the other end. Between that and the Kawhi Leonard alley-oop dunk, and that just gets a team energized. 
we we made some we made some highlight plays, uh, but we they were created with effort. I the one play and maybe 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 I'm got the wrong guy. The one play that I thought was spectacular was when Billy White ran. It looked like the guy had an uncontested layup, and Billy caught him from mid court and pounded the ball off the back. Oh, court. maybe it was uh, Billy, not Malcolm. All right, maybe I, I got I it think, confused. <laughs> I think it was. I think that one was Billy. That was a, a phenomenal effort play to get there, and then just a great athlete to make the, to complete the play to give us the basket. Uh, Billy also had one on a breakaway where he so violently tried to. Uh, dunk the ball. But <laughs> I've never seen one that it, it, it looked like it was all the way through the rim. Right, it came out, it spun back out. Right, and then it got it got stuck between the backboard and the rim. And then it got wedged between the backboard and the rim. <laughs> <laughs> all right, coach. So you guys are on the road now after a 66-53 win against TCU. You got another road game, and is the pressure starting to mount now because you undefeated and? All I mean, what I think it might be like twenty-four straight games and it's like nine straight road wins. Is there any pressure to keep the win streak going? I don't think so, Scott. There's pressure to win. Uh, if you want to win this league, you've got to find ways to win on the road, and uh, we did that last night. We need to do that again on Saturday. Uh, we've, you know, I want to talk about with you guys on your show. Uh, we've tried to embrace the fact that. Uh, we're in uh, high cotton. We're in new territory. We're in rarefied air, and we like it. And in order to stay there, you have to come out with a, with a practice focus and energy that will allow you to play that way. I do. I, I think our players right now, are, they're playing with confidence. They're having fun with one another. They know they're good. They expect to win. I don't think the pressure of being uh, undefeated is is a factor for us right now. There's a pressure pressure to win, pressure to win in this league, especially yeah. on the road, especially against teams that everybody says you're supposed to beat. Uh, that's always there, but I don't think the we're, we're carrying any extra weight because of an undefeated season so far. Yeah, you, you talk about the players and how they're reacting to being undefeated and, and having all this acclaim. Uh, how about how about you? I mean, you've been there before, and you've you've been in similar situations. But do you coach a team any differently than than let's say you're ten and six as opposed to sixteen and zero? Because in the course of a season, there are stretches where you have to change subtly your style with how you deal with the team collectively and individuals. Uh, and I my my task is making sure that I give them enough rope and wiggle room. <laughs> to feel that there's freedom to smile, have fun, and yet be able to push them back online if I think we're losing focus and and the concentration on the job at hand. And that's the the, the you know, the little the hard part, knowing when to say, hey, that you know, you gotta concentrate. Uh, I think if you don't have the, the ability to smile and enjoy what you're doing you 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 take away from some of the joy and beauty of the game, but if they just come out and it, it's just all laughing and you know carefree stuff, I think you've got to be careful with that. So that's what I've been trying to do. I, but I really like the way our kids are doing things. Yeah, they're playing great. Sixty six fifty three was the score last night at TCU. Next up, Utah this Saturday. Not only did they look great on the court. Um, both Malcolm and uh, Kawhi had post-game interviews, and the kids come off looking good, and they sound articulate, and so it's a really nice reflection on the program. Coach, final thought here. Are you in touch with Brady Hoke because of all of the Brady Hoke, Jim Harbaugh, Michigan watch? <laughs> are, are you keeping abreast of all of us, and are you in Brady Hoke's ear? No. I mean, I'm like everybody else. I watch it come across the ticker. I watch what happens, and... Uh... Uh, but I've got enough to do to manage uh, my own job at right. hand and make sure I'm at practice on time. Uh, whatever happens will play itself out. I, like every Aztec uh, fan and coach, hope that Brady is with us next year. And I'm like everybody else. We'll just kind of wait and see what happens. All right. Coach Steve Fisher. Coach, congratulations. Great win. Thanks for being available this way morning. Way to go, Coach. 
Thanks, man. Appreciate you having me on. Always. Thank you, Coach. Coach Steve Fisher.